Hi, Hans Lemerson here. As you may have noticed, I'm a big believer in nice, easy-to-read interfaces, like uh, on that thing and up there where all the inputs were next to each other and you could see what the state of the lever was. I like this because uh, it's hard to figure out if a lever is on a wall. Is that a 1 or a 0? I'm not sure. I mean, I if you're familiar with levers, you know a da lever down is a 1, lever up is a zero, but if there's a whole bunch of levers, uh, it's not so easy to read. So, I designed an interface just like this, where the state that the wi the state of the wire uh, coming out the back is, e is clearly displayed uh, in a location nearby the switch. Flipping this switch causes that to change. The only disadvantage is that the uh, the position of the lever is inverted relative to normal. Where up up is off and down is on. Here it's up is on, down is off, but eh, that's a small price to pay. Now, uh, you probably want to know how these things work, so you can build one yourself and make all of your devices easy to use and easy to read. That's why you watch my videos, right? Okay, if we look behind here, uh, we can see that the way I get the uh, the uh, uh, inputs so close together is that I use staggered wiring. Uh, the The blocks at the corners insulate the different wires. And as you can see, there's no signal leakage. Uh, there's no sig signal leakage from one wire to another. The, the way this works is that the block that the lever is attached to has a torch on the other side. And above the torch is a block, which it makes the torch's output go onto a wire and into the repeater. Now, because it's staggered, some inputs, some some wires get their input from the block on the torch, from the block above the torch. Other wires get their input directly from the torch. Uh, it it doesn't really matter. It works either way. Uh, the only concern is that you have to be a little bit careful that. Uh, the activating this can turn that repeater on. So there can be a bit of backflow, but other than that, it doesn't really matter. So I'll build a little demonstration device. Or I'll just build a little one here for you to see. To see how it's done. See it in action. It's always easiest to see things uh, you know, when they're being done easier to understand. What I'm doing here is just setting up the staggered wiring. If you do multiple levels of this display, then, like you see over there, these would, would correspond to the wires of the level above. Then these levers do the control. They control the torch nicely. And the repeaters go here. The blocks go here. And there's your display. And what and what the display shows is what the wires have. The, the reason I like repeaters here instead of torches is because they don't interfere with the layer above. You can easily uh, just put a layer up here. A 
like so. And there's no interference. And there you go. There this is the this is how you make a high density display and user interface so that you can see what your inputs are. Oh, I thought it might also be us useful to show how how to go from staggered wiring like this to more expanded wiring like yeah, the, the spaced wiring used in most in most buses. So, basically like this. Uh, you start with one and have it go off to the side, and the other one goes off to the side, and they go off to the side a little bit. Actually, I started over here and then just made them go off a little further, a little further each step. And that's how uh, this display here controls these wires here. These are positive and negative lines on a decoder, which selects the function. And over here, for the A input, I ha have the staggered wiring going like this. Buried under here is wiring, is, is wiring and the gray wool is just for insulation, but doesn't have any, doesn't have any wiring on top. And then it just, the wires just peel off to the side wherever they're needed. So that that's one way you can connect staggered wiring to uh, one of your machines. Okay, Hans Lemerson actually signing out this time.